Welcome to another Advent of Code walkthrough. Today we'll be looking at day four. So, space needs to be cleared before the last supplies can be unloaded. Each elf has the job of cleaning up sections, and each section has an ID, and each elf is assigned a range of section IDs. However, as they compare, they've noticed many overlap, and to try to find overlaps and reduce duplicated efforts, they pair up and make a big list of section assignments for each pair, which is your input. So, looking at this input, for the first pair, Within the first pair of elves, the first elf was given sections 2 to 4, so 2, 3, 4. The second elf was given sections 6 to 8, so 6, 7, 8. Second pair were given 2 each, third pair is given 5, 6, 7, and 7, 8, 9, so that would have an overlap. This example list uses single digit section IDs to make it easier to draw, but your actual list might contain larger numbers. So if we go to our input, you do have to be careful that the input does contain multi digit numbers. So, some pairs have noticed that one of their assignments fully contains the other. So in how many pairs does one range fully contain the other? So let's grab our test input and grab our puzzle input. So, we'll, we need to keep track of the total number of pairs, so we'll start with t equals zero, print t at the end again. For line and open zero to go through all the standard input. We'll grab the two halves, which are the um, comma and the dash. So you can do it this way, which is how I did it during the contest. Split on comma first and then like split on dash for each half. But actually what's better is you can just take a line, replace the comma with a dash, and then split on the dash. So that way you can do um, a, b, x, y equals map into on that. So that splits, it takes the comma and replaces it with a dash. So basically turning it into just a list of four numbers separated by dashes. Then we split on those dashes to get a list of four strings, and then we map in to turn them into the numbers. So AB is the section range for uh, one, and XY is the section pair for two. And now we just need to check if one compare, uh, contains the other. So if A is less than X and B is greater than or equal to Y, that means that the first pair contains the second. Or if x is less than or equal to a and y is greater than or equal to b, that means that the second pair contains the first. And so we run that, we get the correct test input of input, is, oh sorry, test output, and the real output is 494, which is correct. For part two, it seems like there's still quite a bit of duplicate work, so now they want to know the number of pairs for which they overlap at all. So the mathematical way to do this would be something like check if either end of each one is contained in the other. I'm not exactly sure. I did it the lazy way, which was just use set intersection. So we can just take the set of the range from A to B. Note that B uh, range excludes the second argument, so you need to add one to make sure it's included. So if there is any intersection, recalling that uh, the AND sign takes the intersection of two sets, then t plus equals 1. So what this does is it constructs the range sets themselves and then finds the intersection and if there are any then there's an overlap so we add 1 to t. This is technically quite inefficient. Um, you can check if two intervals overlap in constant time. This would take linear time on how long the interval is. So it would theoretically be extremely slow if your input is very hard, but the input isn't really hard here so this still runs instantly and we get a test output of 4, and our true output of 833. Yeah, so uh, this one is comparatively easier to, compared to the previous days, honestly, except for one. So that is all for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed and learned something, and I'll see you tomorrow for day five. Thanks for watching.